foster peace and unity in Nigeria. Calls have been made from different quarters of the country, the government, private sector holders, including motivational and public speakers, to join hands together in ensuring that peace and unity remains in Nigeria. We are now being joined by Dr. George Essien from our your studios. Dr. John Essien is a communication and persuasion expert. He's been in the business strategic communications for almost 20 years. He currently serves as Dean of Faculty, Podium Dynamics Academy. Hello and good morning, Dr. Essien. Good morning, Dr. Essien. Good morning. It's good to be here on this um, program this morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to have you here. Very quickly, Nigeria is in very, very trying times. And um, we've seen uh, the, the protests that have rocked the nation. We have seen agitations, I mean, in the last two decades from from the uh, Boko Haram crisis to the farmer herder clashes, uh, the banditry and kidnapping in the Northwest, the um, unknown gunmen uh, problem that has also ravaged the southeastern part of the country, and, and currently the protests that are ongoing now. There's, there seems to be uh, a lot of need for peace and unity to be restored in the country. To you. I've studied communications for close to 20 years. And there are two essential skills that we talk about very often, and one is negotiation and the second is persuasion. These two play a major role in getting people to work together as a team and in fostering peace. We need to learn how to negotiate and do it in a civil manner. If you're going to get anything done, if you're going to move forward as a nation, move forward as a society, move forward as a group, then we need to understand not just the mechanics, but the dynamics of negotiation. And for the leaders, those stakeholders, those who are at the end of affairs, they should understand how to persuade. The, the Latin word for persuasion is persuaso, and it literally means true sweet talk. If you want us to go through a process, then you need to learn how to communicate. So uh, one of the ways we're going to foster peace to uh, the populace that's apparently agitating because of what they are going through, especially if the leader has a vision, a strong, clear vision, and we have to go through that process, then he really needs to be able, not just he, everybody who's a stakeholder, anyone who's a leader, who's leading in any space, should come out, communicate, persuade, true sweet talk the people that we should keep going and that there is hope so those are my thoughts about what's going on in our country it's challenging yet it is true but i'm assuming that our leaders have a vision because when there's no vision like they say in the scripture the people perish our leaders have a vision and they're taking us in a particular direction it doesn't matter what we're going through uh, we're going to go and reach there at the end however the leaders need to learn how to persuade, need to keep persuading, keep talking to us. And of course, for those of us agitating, for the uh, people agitating, we must understand that we don't want to light this country up. We want to negotiate. And I mean, there have been talks on ground. I heard the speech of the president on Sunday. And I had he had a speech, he did something yesterday, yesterday at yes. the Executive Council meeting. Yes. He's calling for talks, he's calling for negotiations. So I appeal to everyone you know, to let's have a conversation and let's see how we can move our nation forward. In, in, in appealing for talks, in appealing for, for talks, in appealing for uh, there is a need for strong persuasion as well. It's not just enough for people to talk it's also important and pertinent for people to talk and talk the right way. Uh, Nigeria is, is um, a very complex country with diverse uh, religions, tribes, ethnicities and the rest. Uh, cultures, I might add. Now, how, how do we create a balance of understanding across board if you take a look at the dynamics of the protests that have that are, you know that have been ongoing there seems to be some sort of disparity and a communication gap between 
what is going on in places like Lagos, in places like Benin, in places like Uyo, and what is going on in places like, you know, Kibi, uh, Zaria, Kano, Nasara, um, Zamfara, and, and the rest. So how do we strike this balance of uh, and close up the communication gap? to start um, throwing blames or blaming people right now but I think that every time there's a crisis such as these there's a need for leaders to arise that's where we truly test the quality of leaders that were elected quality of leaders all across the nation so people need to start speaking up leaders need to start speaking up and so um, I don't want to I mean, we need to have a very solid communications team in the nation that will talk about that will speak to the people in the various in the various in the various language we need the pastors we need the imams we need the leaders across the board to start speaking and to speak consistently this is the time for this is a time when your leadership will be tested it is in crisis that leadership is really tested not when things are rosy so uh, my advice and my encouragement because is to say look we have leaders we elected already we have leaders we, that are appointed. We have leaders that we respect. We have religious leaders who are across the nation. We have traditional leaders. This is a time to speak. This is a time to persuade. However, they want to do it. They understand the language of the people. They understand the temperature of the people. They know what they also feel what the people are going through. So they need to start speaking now. They need to start talking. Because if they don't do it, uh, that is going to be a question in their leadership. And that will cause the nation to be endangered. So I, I saw, I've seen the protests across the nation. I mean, the one in the northern part of the country has been quite dynamic. Um, do seem to understand how it's going. The other time we saw a Russian flag. We saw people trying to burn the the, 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 the national flag and so on. But they're, they're, they're trying. The protesters are saying something, and the leaders are pointed. The leaders that they believe in and they know can still speak to them. And of course, the protesters, within the protesters, they also have leaders. And what stakeholders should start doing is reach out to them and find a way to communicate. This is not the time to lay blames because I'll start mentioning a few things that certain leaders should be doing. But this is the time to just call leaders to arise and to play their role as communicators. Because now, literally, um, communication is what leadership is all about. It's communication, we foster peace, we build a team, we push a mission forward, and that's what we need to start doing. Well, Dr. Essen, uh, I, the call made to leaders, both leader, political leaders, religious leaders, and uh, you know traditional leaders, to know how to effectively effectively communicate in thousand the tensions in the country is quite um, you know a timely one. However, thought leaders in terms of you know public speakers and the rest, what what is the role of uh, of people like you? in ensuring that uh, you also fill up this gap. To also, you know, say that Nigeria should, we are still together, we are, there's still hope for the country. I know sometimes it's difficult to imagine that. Uh, I mean, you know, years ago, people talked about Project 2025, Nigeria in 2020, and it seems as though all hope is lost. But I still have that faith, and that's why I'm still in the country, and that's why I still do what I do. And I'm, I'm appealing to people who are speakers, people who are thought leaders, people who are content creators, people who are influencers. If you, if we, if we incite violence and we cause commotion in our country, we weigh down the country, and when we weigh down the country, there will be no place for us to go to. I, if Nigeria goes aflame, it will be very difficult to put Nigeria together again. It will be very, very difficult. And so we have to be very careful. I, I plead that all of us, all of us influencers, content creators, public speakers, religious leaders, because you see, religious leaders are quite influential, especially the young ones, the ones who have dynamic churches in the metropolitan cities, uh, those ones who have um, churches that have very consistent programs on social media. They need to speak, pray, and advocate, persuade with the people so that there can be peace. So we're doing a lot. I'm on a regular basis posting on my social media handles. I am I'm, I'm here today to also show support. I was told about this meeting yesterday and I was told I was going to speak about it. I said, no, why not? Why not come around and just say, my name is Dr. George ACN. I live in Nigeria. I still believe in Nigeria. 
and I'm hoping that um, whatever the policies, whatever vision our leaders have put in place will come to pass. We need to negotiate, yes. We need to agitate, yes, but let's do it civilly. Let's go out there, let's speak with the government and let's keep putting our demands out there. Hopefully, things will get better for our country. Those are my thoughts and that's my encouragement. Well, Dr. George, I must thank you for setting a premise for the important tools in which this effective public speaking, which we hope would engender peace and stabilize our nation, would take flight on. But now looking at the antecedents that has been set in recent times, it is on what many say is a lack of negotiation. Yes, the president has made his address very persuasive, uh, but in terms of negotiations, I've seen comments on X asking the 10 for 10 demand as put out by the protesters, five in seven days, this is day eight. Uh, we can't say that uh, much has been hinged on a negotiation of certain terms being met to dissuade the protesters from protesting. Now, in terms of the negotiation that government needs to do in dialoguing with the people, what would you advise that the government does in response to the five uh, demands in seven days and the many five going into the month of October? And credibility, what we call the atos. Credibility facilitates persuasion. Your antecedents, what you have done. So I guess, and I suspect that, a lot of the protesters, a lot of people agitating, don't have as much confidence with uh, I mean, the government and the leaders. And that's the challenge right now in the communication process that our leaders have. Maybe they truly want to bring about change. Maybe they truly want to negotiate. But because of that, um, credibility lacuna, that challenge. So people don't believe that if they come out, they won't be arrested. If they come out, they won't, you know, uh, whatever they are demanding will not be addressed. So it behoves on the leaders to establish credibility. So this time, really come out, find a way to have a conversation with the people. And whatever demands, of course, you're not going to meet all their demands. It's going to take us some time. Have you find a way to meet all the people? Whatever demands they have, see how you can address it. Tell them, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this for later. We're working on this, we're working on that. And then make sure that you do all that you do. Because once, how do you build credibility? True, consistent delivery of whatever it is that you said you've done or you do. So the leaders can become a little consistent, can do the things that they do after the people, because obviously at some point the people would have to negotiate, they say 10 days, after 10 days people will come out to have conversations, whatever we, we agree upon, let's start working towards it, that will start building trust with the leadership and obviously next time if there's any agitation you can call them and they will um, respond positively. So um, I'll say that um, yes, there's such a challenge. The reason why the protesters have challenge because they don't have not come to trust the, people, the leaders. They feel that oh, it's just business as usual. But I'm now, Dr. George, some of the issues are also pressing issues, pressing issues, pressing issues that many are looking at from what is evidence all across the nation, yes. all across the nation, and is evidence in the fact that uh, the federal government has taken certain steps to be able to rebuild this trust. Top of the agenda in terms of the demands is addressing hunger. In addressing hunger, the federal government through the upper legislative chamber has deployed trucks of grains to different states in Nigeria. But up until now, some states are yet to receive the delivery of such grains. Some states have also seen looting of warehouses where the grains were reportedly stored owing to a delay in disbursement. Now, we're also being practicable whilst we dialogue. Uh, could there have been better steps taken in building this trust by Nigerians seeing the delivery of these grains that they have been expected to tackle the hunger which is top of their demands? Yeah, but not the best idea. For me, I would not go that route. However, if you're choosing to provide 
bags and trucks of rice for people, make sure they receive it. So that's also been a challenge. I noticed there's a particular place in Nigeria, I don't know what particular state they went and looted all of those materials. And that's also allowing people not to trust the leadership again. So there, yes, there's a huge challenge. Again, like I said at the beginning, the leaders need to learn how to persuade. They need to do it ethically. They need to be they need to build trust. There's a breakdown of trust. Um, yes, you said the federal government have been talking, have been doing stuff. Again, I'll just say this, that we have um, some people in the information part of the, uh, the unit of the federal government that are not doing too well on social media. They are inciting, they're making certain statements that I think needs to be curtailed and controlled because people are angry and irritating. So while the governor or the president is saying this, certain people on social media are attacking and saying wars are not right. This is a time for peace. This is a time for sweet talk. This is a time for encouragement. This is a time to persuade. This is a time to negotiate, not a time to incite. And um, like I said, I'm speaking to all the stakeholders. Um, it's not a time to lay blame. Oh, we're not doing this, we're not doing this. Let's call the people. People are willing to speak. And I, I, one of those um, social media persons was saying that uh, we have not, the president and the executive haven't really addressed the issue. So whatever they need to be, to, to be addressed, let the president, let the executive, let the House of Reps, let the Senate, let everybody, stakeholders come and address it. Give us timelines. I was telling, last week I was talking to, I was on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is like an app. A podcast app on social media and looking at people Nigerians in diaspora because we are saying what are your thoughts and then the, the president hadn't spoken and I said to them I said it's good that the president speaks the president is like a father to us to Nigerians there's no way he, he will come on the air I said look my people this is what we are going to 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 that they will be saying it was good that he came on Sunday to do it that was a very strategic and good move and I'm hoping that uh, the protesters will listen and at least give the stakeholders a listening ear and negotiate their terms. Well, well, Dr. Essien, uh, in, in the past, we've seen, uh, in, in, in the past, uh, we've seen symposiums, seminars, and the rest being held by organizations surrounding peace and conflict resolution in parts of the country. Uh, now, do, do we see more of this springing up in you know the near future, uh, talking about these symposiums and, and seminars that are meant to help foster peace and unity uh, across across the nation and can, can this be done in such a way that it's more accessible to a wider range of people and not just um, a, a meeting or event or an event of about 20 to 30 people how can 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 state governments how can local governments you know also pick up this initiative and organize uh, some of these peace and conflict resolution seminars. In these um, events will be done, uh, you know, put together events uh, and even putting together virtual meetings or putting together anything that will get people together in their large numbers and reach out to other people will require a lot of resources and in this case the support of the government. I mean, I believe that this current government has some very intelligent and smart persons. The National Orientation Agency, I believe that's the power starter, that's the organization that handles all of this, yes. should now rise up and put together the, the, around the whole of Nigeria. You know, work with people like us, work with leaders, work with um, religious leaders, work with motivational speakers, with young people and then start putting together town, if you want to call it town hall meetings, I know the town hall meetings has been, uh, term has been politicized, but you can call some kind of town hall meetings, let's have conversations. Because in civil, civil society, civilized societies, people have talks. Let's have meetings, let's have talks. Let's go into the streets and talk. And while we talk, we also give them some things to take, you know, because people are hungry. <laughs> we're hungry. Don't just talk. We also have to get a few things to take. So this can be done. Again, the reason why a few of us aren't able to do enough is because it will require a lot of money, a lot of resources. But if the government and the National Orientation Agency, I believe that's the name, I don't think they've changed the name, will you know, begin to work with us and work with other people, persons, this can happen. We can have lots of meetings around. You know, communication cuts across a broad spectrum of industries. 
You see it in you see it in politics, you see it in leadership, you see it in business, you see it in enterprise, and it's a skill and it's a it's a thing that everybody who wants to truly lead and truly win needs to master. And that's why this is the time, like I said earlier, that leaders, leaders who have been appointed and elected should rise up and demonstrate their leadership qualities by communicating, putting together whatever they have to put together so that Nigerians can benefit and move forward. Well, you, you earlier mentioned hunger well, you, you as earlier, one of the major causes of the um, uh, you know challenge that we now face as a country which has also resulted in uh, nationwide agitations. And you also touched on the bags of rice sent to states by uh, the federal government, some of which were looted during the course of the protest. I, I believe it's not news that some states are yet to receive delivery of some of these trucks of, of um, bags of rice. However, in places like Yobe State, the governor has decided not to wait for uh, the federal government to roll out bags of rice for them. Instead, he has um, done what is known as implements and inputs distribution to over 5,300 farmers across 178 wards and 17 LGAs in the state. Now my question is, some governors are doing the talking while others are taking action. How can we, you know, stop, do less of talking and more of action because in communicating communication doesn't necessarily have to just be the talking the speaking people that people are sometimes tired of just hearing promises empty promises they want to be spoken to through actions what are your thoughts on this let me say this to us the, the 2023 elections um stop us a lesson i'm sure it'll stop the people a lesson in moving forward in the next elections, we hope that when leaders come to ask for our votes, that we'll ask the right questions. Because how can the federal government release these things and they're not getting to the people? Getting to the people. So the people will need to choose rightly. Because when you ask me, you're telling me what are my thoughts on this. My thoughts are that the leaders need to arise in this occasion. Uh, you know this period people need to start do, showing that they are truly leaders you know people are home or something and you have some government like you said making noise or talking and not believing on what the federal government has released that's not so good so like i said the people should make wise choices in the next election it's, and it's not very far we think okay 2027 i mean before you know it we're done in 2024 and then in 2025 and then in 2027. These politicians, these leaders will come again to ask for your votes. Be wise. Ask the right questions. Knowing that in the nearest future, you're going to make demands and you want them to, uh, to deliver on those goals that you have. So my thoughts are that, leaders, please, let's make it happen. Like I said, imagine people going to discover a, a place where uh, palliatives or whatever was available. It's not good. It's not good for the leadership. It's not good for the governor in that particular state. And many kudos to the governor of Yobe State for you know doing the needful, not waiting for the federal government to release. Doing the needful. That's such a good, good way to work. The intervention is good, but that's not holistic. That's not the ultimate way we should go. I think that the government needs to sit down the round table, have a mastermind, um, an, an alliance, come up with people, people who can work and then I'm sure that the president has an economy team. And one of the things I was looking out for when his, his excellency, uh, the president became president you know, a few years, a year ago, or a year plus ago, was to watch out for his economy team. His economy team because a lot of the things we're going through right now is economic. You know, put them together and then come up with an idea. Once you come up with a vision, an idea, a direction, then you can now sell the vision, sell the ideas to people. And then these palliatives can just be to cushion the effect for a while until what you want to do is up. So personally, I've not seen that strong enough. I've not seen it clear enough. We need to see it clear. The thing about communication is that you don't just say, you show. Because when people show, they feel. When you see what you're talking about, they feel. Um, vision and passion, vision and feelings, they're very tied together. So the challenge of the leader is, is not just um, 
seen, seen and seen and seen. You have to show them through however and then also demonstrate love by the things they do. But again, you can, sh you can give them the qualities and then come back again and complain. And that's why doctors across the nation need to start speaking and communicating, showing them all the direction. The president, from the president down to the Senate, to the House of Reps, to the governors, to the local government chairman, to everybody who is a stakeholder, we need to show the people the clear vision. This is where we are going and that's why we need to hold ourselves together and not agitate. Those are my thoughts for now. Now, now, Dr. George, it's interesting to listen to some of the doubts you have in terms of the deliverables and the deliverance of democracy and its dividends to the Nigerian people. One of the issues we're leaving out in this discussion is the unity of Nigeria. Now, many have said that this hashtag end bad governance protest has been masqueraded behind a lot of agitations from sections of this country that have carried a backlog of grievances at some of the misgivings of past administrations and some of the supposed marginalizations of ethnic groups or even regions as a whole in terms of the Nigerian dream and the Nigerian vision. Now in fostering this unity that is somewhat lacking, uh, what are some of the important tools that the government may need to deploy in ensuring that we all feel as one Nigeria and benefit from the vast abundant resources many say their regions possess but are yet to manifest in where their social life is and human capital development is um if you go abroad you travel abroad you travel to the uk or canada or america and you see nigerians whether they are from whether they're yobas evils alsas wherever whatever place is the team the video one of the things you notice about Nigerians in diaspora, we find a way to be united. We have this, you don't want, you don't want to go against any Nigerian. It wouldn't matter where he's from at that point. We will find a way to make sure that that person is safe, that person is well at that point in time. We go to sports and you see how Nigeria is playing football. Recently, the female uh, basketball team lost to the US, but they did quite well in the, at the Olympics. When you see you know, the way Nigerians come, they, they're, not, they're not concerned about what tribes they are from, they want to support. It shows that somewhere in the heart of the Nigerian, we want to remain one. We want to be one. We have a lot of people from the Southeast, from the north that have southeast that have investment and stake um, and, and businesses in the southwest in the north and they really want all of that to lose graph flame. So there is a set of persons that are following the flames of uh, tribalism. And of course the issues are there. But again sometimes we exaggerate this we accentuate these issues. My thoughts I believe that's why we need to have a strong communication team, and I hope the president is listening and the, you know, the stakeholder are listening, that will help us understand that there is more that can bring us together than divide us. Yes, the issues are there. Yes, there are some form of tribalism, but if you look at it very critically, Nigerians love themselves. Nigerians consume their products. We do Nollywood. We do, we watch, listen to music. We sing, the evil man sings Yoruba songs that are in the lyrics of the uh, anybody. The Alsa man, we play music on the cross. That should tell us that, yes, to a large extent, we want to be together. The government would need to, you know, work out a very strong plan. If you need to go back and work the constitution, there's so much talk about uh, reform, uh, reforms, you know, not just amending the constitution, look at the constitution again, and all of that. Well, we will do that. But I believe that with strong communication, the right words, the right people, Nigerians can still be together. Now, Dr. Let's, let's, let's quickly pick up on case studies that. before, before um, Chijoke comes in. Now, it's interesting, and I agree with you, citing the examples you've made in the UK and elsewhere. Now, one of the challenges, particularly over time in Nigeria, has come from Lagos. Lagos is one of the perfect representations of a cosmopolitan city with the right blend of different ethnic and tribal groups that have 
Gear groups. The city yes. has new gear groups. New Lofty Heights as one of the most uh, profitable cities you would visit in Africa. But every time there is an agitation or say a protest for a reform that would better the lives of every Nigerian, somehow we find the music of tribal bigotry being injected into Lagos and uh, targeting particularly a certain demographics of persons who are largely very good with making trade blossom and they're being asked to leave Lagos repeatedly. How does the government of Lagos or even of the country address this issue of repeated tribal bigotry in Lagos? Just to be making the most noise that you get to hear. Like I said in my submission, that the vast majority of persons want us to be together. To, together. Lagos is a very dynamic and versatile city, and there are a lot of neighbors who, who get married to Igbos, a lot of neighbors who get married to Alsa people. Yeah, I mean, so it's just that the people who make the most noise are the ones we hear. So the government needs to put together a plan. You know, you go to other countries, you know that there is a strong communications team that makes sure that their voice is loud. Loud. I said earlier that when I look at what they are doing on social media, because that's where a lot of young persons are, what they're doing on social media, they're not doing enough to foster unity. We need to work more with the National Orientation Agency. We need to work more with the Ministry of Communication. You need to wake up now. This is the time for you to start singing a song. The time, the time when um, of blessed memory, Dr. Dora Akimi uh, came up with the rebrand of Nigeria. Whatever we need to do, and we need to be very loud about it, very loud, get celebrities, influencers to do it. Yes, there are issues. Like you said in Lagos, yes, we have a few touts here and there that come out and then find the ambers of, of tribalism. But there are a lot of people saying, who don't go and go with them? Take, for example, um, he, his Excellency, with all due respect to him, did not even win in Lagos. That's to show you that people wanted a different kind of leadership in Lagos, in Lagos, as dynamic as it was. So that talk about, um, so just a few persons, what we now need is the government to you know, put together the right team that will make sure that the right statements are put out there and they're loud about it. They're on social media, they're on the media like this, and that will help us to reduce tribalism. And these things everywhere, everywhere across. In Singapore, for example, they don't have different, they just have different tribes, they have different races. You have racial issues, you have religious issues, uh, they have different religious religions, and so they have issues there. But they're able to work together in Singapore, work together in Malaysia, work together in India. Nigerians, yes, we have a very dynamic country. We have about 750 local governments, we have about 250 ethnicities, but we can work together. Yes, we can work together. Well, well, Dr. Essen, you, you pointed out that uh, Essen, you, in you a place pointed out Lagos, that. a cosmopolitan state with, uh, you know, its uh, blend of different tribes and ethnic groups and, and all of that, uh, the, the comments, the tribal comments, tribal threats of, uh, you know, exiting Lagos uh, com is coming in from just a little, a small number of people in that part of the country. However, let me take you to the northern part of the country where developments leading up or following the protests, uh, you know, have been met with a lot of uh, mixed reactions as we saw that a Russian flag was hoisted by some protesters in the northern part of Nigeria. And um, I spoke to some people, comments that were coming in from Nigeria is that if that incident had occurred in a certain part of the country, well, maybe the southeastern part of the country, it would have been an entirely different ball game altogether. Now, I know it's just a few people making these statements, but then a forest fire usually starts from just can start from one one matchstick catching fire. So, if little by little these statements are coming in from different quarters of the country, don't you think that perhaps it could pose a bigger threat to the peace and unity of Nigeria? A huge threat, but why not? Um, I saw that flag being done. 
I don't still understand what they're trying to say because people are trying to communicate something. They said to wrap themselves around that flag. They said to you know, they didn't, I, I didn't hear the chants, but I know that the way our Norton brothers work is that they work. They have a very strong leadership culture. They take instructions from their leaders before they make any decision, uh, and they have they, they respect their leaders so much. And so in that case, and the cultures are very dynamic. For them, I don't understand what they were doing. I don't understand why they went, why they instead display the Russian flag. But for them, we need to speak with their their emirs, their malams, any all the leaders there to talk to the people. Again, it's about hunger. It's economic. It's economic. All of the agitation is economic. So talk to them. Give yourself, give them a timeline. I know that right now, as at yesterday or two days ago, there's a coffee in Kaduna. I'm expecting some goods to come from Kaduna to some books to come from Kaduna to Iyo. And there's a coffee. And I hear in Bauchi and in Yubi. And um, beyond the coffee, the leaders who these people respect, especially in the north, the north, they listen to their leaders. The north, I mean, you can say in the southeast, uh, we were very independent. Southeast and south, south, we were almost very independent. But the north, they listen to their leaders, and um, these leaders need to arise in occasion and talk to their people. Yes, if it had happened in the southeast, there might be uh, been a different coloration. Again, it's about the way things are communicated. This way, would have uh, some people, some little elements would have blown it out of proportion and made a few out of it. And that's why we need to have a strong communication team that comes into the picture. Like, like, like right now, with that flag being shown, we still don't understand what they're trying to say. Some people say they want um, Russia to, to come and you know intervene, and I don't understand the intelligence or the wisdom around it, or what statement yet. So we need to start having um, a strong communication, like I said, that will counter and be a little more loud. So, for the North, we have to have strong people that they listen to. Speak to them, get across to them, connect with them at a deep level, they will reach out to their people, and then they will most likely be peace for a period of time. Now, I'm Dr. George AC, and as we wrap up this conversation, I'd just like to get your thoughts and projections into Nigeria's future as a United States. Many say we're still quite young in our struggle for national unity, but we're looking at a, a time in which the legislative houses are also entertaining requests for the creation of more regions and possibly a rotation of the presidency and a reform that would see more inclusion and participation in governance. As we wind down this conversation, let's get your thoughts as we close. Stand. But, you know, I, I've done a little bit of study on America, United States of America, and I realized that when they were 50, 60, they also had very, very many issues. They had slavery, they had racial issues, they had lots of issues. And the, the system they run now has evolved over the years. They've experimented with a lot of ideas. They've tweaked their constitution to fit into what they are running now, and that's why it seems as though democracy is working for America and for many other states. People argue that democracy does, is not really working for African nations. I, I think that we need to just tweak it a little bit to fit our model. So, it, moving forward in Nigeria, what I feel that members of the House of Reps and Senate and as the executive should do more often is let's have a conversation. All of these ideas can be entertained. Yes, do we need to reform this area? Do we need to tweak this area? Tweak that area? talk with the people about having more regions, having more powers to the states, uh, state policing, all those are conversations that the Nigerian people can have, the House of Rest can have, the Senate can have. Those are things and they can be tried. There's nothing wrong in trying. And if it doesn't work, we can reverse back to whatever uh, that we were doing before. Like I said, using America as a model, because very often we do everything following the American model. They, have, they went through quite a lot before they arrive at what we have today. And even today, they still have their own issues. So Nigeria is not a peculiar case. Yes, you have tribal issues. Like I mentioned, Singapore has a very diverse, a very diverse nation that has, though it's a small nation, but has multi-racial, multi-ethnic, uh, multi multi-religious group, and yet they're still together as a nation. 
All right. Uh, we wonder, as another, as another Christian, we wonder, you know, we went through a very, very, very serious situation in the 1990s where there was genocide as a result of tribalism. But today, we, many people are making reference to Rwanda. So if, there is, if they were able to still find a way to come back, if India is doing well, if, if um, all these other countries, we can make reference, they are not perfect, but they are doing well. It means that there is hope. We are just pleading and praying that our leaders will rise to the occasion, come together and do the needful. In the next few years, next few years, all things being equal, leaders rising to the occasion, the citizens will also put their hands together, be able to negotiate, everything being equal, things will get better for this country. I know that we don't have hope, but I still believe that there is hope. That, All right. That when we when we look at the thank you very sector, much. We look at skit makers and the noise they make. We look at Nollywood. We look at the, the music industry and how Nigerians are making us proud. It means that there is something about Nigerians that don't give up. That has a fighting spirit and that we can win. All uh, we have to uh, do is let our leaders, <laughs> let our leaders come together and make it happen. Somebody was saying that on the final. Somebody was saying that that there's a difference between Niger and Nigeria. And that Nigeria is, you know, where we have all our leaders, corrupt leaders, and those who are not making things move for Nigeria. And there's Nigeria that has that dynamic young set of persons, even older persons that believe in progress, that make us proud. So well, this well, is well, a well, major. Th of thank Nigeria you so much. Nigeria. Thank you so much, Dr. Essien. Uh, the the Nigerian spirit must be instilled in every Niger person to move this country forward. Well, that has been Dr. John Essen, a communication and persuasion expert. Uh, he's been in the business of strategic communications for almost two decades. Now, currently serves as Dean of Faculty at the uh, Podium Dynamics Academy. And he's been speaking with us concerning ways of fostering peace and unity in Nigeria.